The late, great Winston Churchill knew he was walking with destiny. Learn how you can walk with destiny every day of your life. Next, on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Winston Churchill was the only real political watchman in this end time. Adolf Hitler was rising in the early 1930s, and Winston Churchill was very much aware of that and began to warn about the danger of Adolf Hitler in Germany even in the early 30s. And he warned his British people, and he warned the Western world, but he was almost alone because he, he simply wasn't uh, being accepted. His own party rejected him. That included the media and uh, academia and uh, politicians. They just simply rejected what he said until the end of the 1930s, and then uh, they had to realize that he was right about what he was saying. So he was made Prime Minister to, of Britain, and then essentially his nation stood alone in the world until America was bombed into the war. But what I want to talk to you about today is what, what Winston Churchill thought about himself really shocked the world in many ways and uh, at that time, and it stuns the world even today when they read about it. Andrew Roberts has wrote a book recently in uh, 2018. The title of it was Churchill Walking with Destiny. Now, what is that all about, Churchill Walking with Destiny? Let me read to you what uh, Andrew Roberts wrote. When King, this is the name of a, uh, a member of Parliament, I believe, at the time, when King told Churchill that no one else could have saved the British Empire in 1940, Churchill replied that he had had very exceptional training, having been through a previous war and having had large experience in government. This idea was reiterated by the conservative politician Lord Hailsham, who had been a junior minister in Churchill's wartime government, when he said, Quote, the one case in which I think I can see the finger of God in contemporary history is Churchill's arrival at the premiership at that precise moment in 1940. Now that was the uh, one case, he said, where he could see the finger of God bringing Winston Churchill on the scene at that precise moment. He believed that this was brought about by God. Is that possible? Well, it's possible, but is it probable? <laughs> Notice what he goes on to say, Churchill put his remarks to King and Ede for more poetically three years later in the final lines of his book, The Gathering Storm, the first volume of his war memoirs, recalling the evening of Friday, 10, May 1940, just after he became Prime Minister when he had become Prime Minister only hours after Adolf Hitler had unleashed his blitzkrieg on the West, Churchill wrote this, I felt as if I were walking with destiny, and that all my past life had been but a preparation for this hour and for this trial. He felt like he had been walking with destiny. I. Uh, would like to talk about that today because Roberts also says this book explores the extraordinary degree to which in 1940 Churchill's past life had indeed been but a preparation for his leadership in the Second World War. But his view of destiny is certainly different than mine, and I think the uh, uh, certainly what we need, of course, is God's definition of destiny as well as uh, that of the world. But here's what the Oxford Dictionary says about uh, destiny. Predetermined course of events. Fate. Number two, particular person's fate or lot. And predetermined, all of that. And then the, the Webster Dictionary says, to decree beforehand, set apart for a specific purpose. Is that possible that God set Winston Churchill apart for a specific purpose, even though he was a politician? He was not. 
serving uh, any, in any biblical purpose that he knew of. Another definition is something to which a person or thing is destined. Or number two, a predetermined course of events often held to be an irresistible power or agency. But the one I like best is set apart for a specific purpose. Winston Churchill said this, I felt as if I were walking with destiny, and that all my past life had been but a preparation for this hour and for this trial. Again, is this really, really something that happens in this world? Now, in his case, it was vividly real, and I want to talk to you about walking with destiny. What, if, what about walking with destiny? Now, look, if you look in the Bible, this might be startling to a few people, and, but uh, when, you, when God talks about walking with destiny, He's not just talking about the future, He's talking about right now you leading a very adventurous life and having something really spectacular down the road that awaits you. Not only in this world, but also in the world tomorrow, when God rules this earth. But it, let me tell you something that you need to think about. <laughs> the, uh, he's talking about having a destiny where you have abundance and, and happiness and joy and uh, protection from God in this world. That's what he's talking about, uh, what God is talking about in this, in this context. But I can tell you, if you uh, learn, you can if you want to, you, I don't care who you are, you can actually be walking with God, and you can be walking with destiny. And it will be the most exciting and challenging way of life you've ever imagined. Walking with destiny. Now, if you look at this in the context of God, it's far more important than anything ever was in Winston Churchill's life. And if you are walking with destiny with God, it's many times more important than what Churchill was even doing in, uh, in his lifetime while he was, as many historians say, saving Western civilization. He said, I felt as if I were walking with destiny. He felt that he was just walking with, uh, with destiny, something really critical and something he, he, he was actually prepared for all his life. And that is true. That is true. And you can see that in, in a moment, even right in your Bible, if you look at it and, uh, and think about it. The danger of the Western world at that time was just, uh, well, they thought they were going to be going back to the Dark Ages, because Adolf Hitler was a real barbarian. And I've written about uh, how Churchill warned him in my uh, booklet on uh, Churchill the Watchman. And he was that. And he was really the only political watchman we've had in this end time. And uh, World War II finally started in 1939, and then in 1940 he became uh, Prime Minister. And uh, historians will say, well, he, he saved Western civilization. Now that's not really true, because no man can really do that. But God using a man can do that, and did do it. He used Winston Churchill, he prepared him all of his life to save Western civilization, and primarily uh, Britain and America and the Jews in the Middle East because of their special destiny that they've forgotten about and lost, but they should know that, that they have a destiny, but they've rejected it. But anyhow, he fought and won against Germany in the sixth head of the Holy Roman Empire. Now that seventh head is coming on the scene. Just probably even this year, and, and certainly no later than next year, I do believe, and you can watch that closely and, and see if I'm not right on that. But here we have American Iran exchanging violent blows, and it looks like it, there could be a terrible war there. 
But I'll tell you this, and I can tell you absolutely that America is not going to destroy Iran, but I can also tell you absolutely that the Holy Roman Empire is going to destroy Iran and their uh, terrorist sponsoring regime, which is an evil like we've never seen before in this world. Now, we have a booklet on the King of the South, and all of our literature is free, and it tells you all about Iran's future and that of the Holy Roman Empire. We've been teaching this for some two decades, and then it's there in your Bible. But whether we like it or not, World War III is coming unless we do something that we're not inclined to do. We're going to have to do something if we avoid World War III and all the massive suffering that's going to come before the time when Jesus Christ stops World War III, because if He didn't stop it, there would be no flesh saved alive, the Moffat translation says of Matthew 24 and verse 21. Now, that's how bad it's going to be, and God warns us in a, some 100 prophecies in your Bible. And yet, you, you, uh, do you really hear any, any ministers talking about this? Well, God commissions His, His true church to talk about this subject and, uh, and uh, teach people what it all means. What it all means. God is offering you a, to a chance to walk with destiny like Winston Churchill couldn't even imagine. And I'm, that's not an exaggeration. It's in your Bible. God it has, a, has a master plan for human beings. And I'll tell you, I think Winston Churchill may just be the greatest political leader in this end time, but what God is talking about, when He talks about walking with destiny with Him, that it's, it's, just, it's just trivial by comparison. And you can, if you write for this literature, you'll see what I'm talking about if you don't know. But here you have, see, uh, Churchill was chosen by the British people now. That, that's something we have to keep in mind, by the British people. And uh, again, Britain and America are the birthright nations. That's explained in our book on the United States and Britain in Prophecy. And the nation of called Israel today is actually Biblical Judah. And they have the scepter promise, or the, the, the promise to have a, a, a Jewish king or queen sit on David's throne, which is on this earth right now. Where is it? Jesus Christ is going to return to that throne. Well, we have another booklet, the new throne of David, and you need to know where it is. He's not returning to a, a non-existent throne. He's returning to a throne, and He's going to sit on it because it's His right to do so. It is actually the throne of God, but it's called by Him the throne of David to let Him know that He's calling men into His family. Now, uh, we have all this wealth and power which we're uh, using at times, and it, it, it's here because uh, God gave it to us, but we're not using it often the way God would uh, choose for us to do so. So God is going to have to teach us some lessons in this end time, but I want to show what God really wants for us. In verse 11 it says, Say unto them, As I live, says the eternal God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from his way, and live, turn you, turn you from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? House of Israel, prophetic Israel in this end time, is actually America and Britain. And our book on the United States and Britain and Prophecy will teach you that and prove it to you. But you see, God makes us choose. But He says now, He said, turn and live. God wants you to live and, and walk with destiny. And this is talking about the death of nations here and when you talk about World War III. And God says, now look, I'll, I'll save you physically and spiritually if you'll let me. 
but He's going to make us choose whether we, uh, or which way we go. Do we want to just go on our own way and suffer horribly before Christ gets here, or do we want to repent and change things right now and turn it away, turn things around? And of course, it doesn't look like the nations are going to do it, but individuals are doing it, turning, 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 and living and walking with destiny, a destiny that is mind boggling. <laughs> and that's not an exaggeration. It is not. Notice what it says in chapter 33 of Ezekiel, which I read verse 11 from just a moment ago. But here it says, In the word of the Eternal, this is verse 1, came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land. Well, what do you know? Now, this, if you see the setting here in the context, you have to see this is just before World War III and just after. Uh, and even during World War II. But it's when I bring the sword upon a land. You mean, is it conceivable that God brought the sword upon America and Britain and World War II and the whole Western world, really, through a madman by the name of Adolf Hitler? Well, that's, this is what God is saying here. And if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, there is only one place in history, and that is this end time, and one man who fulfilled that role. A man that was a political watchman. He wasn't a God's watchman at all, he was a political watchman. Well, it did end with him. We need to be aware of that or we can't understand uh, these prophecies. And did you know that God has always warned Israel when they were in a great crisis, and He sent some kind of a uh, Savior or prophet to warn them and let them know what was coming? They always know, God will know, and God even had somebody showing us then uh, what this was all about and what it meant. And our books and booklets will explain that to you. But if you read any history of World War II, you'll see that the British people knew there were many miracles being performed in uh, World War II. And they talked about it at that time, but they hardly ever talk about it now because they're getting further and further away from God, as America is and as the Jewish people are. And that's the wrong direction, and that's dangerous. Verse 3. If when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blows the trumpet, and then he goes on to tell the people if, if they don't respond to that, well, their blood's on their own head. Then on the other hand, if the watchman that God has chosen, even politically in this case, if the watchman blow not the trumpet, then the blood's going to be on his head. So. If, it, if the blood's going to be on his head, God must have worked and prepared him throughout his life to be chosen by the people to be their watchman. Now, God isn't going to hold this man accountable for the blood of all the people unless, unless he's been involved. And he's, he brought the sword on the land, and any time he does that, he always warns the people, either with a prophet or a political watchman in this case. But it's about to change forever. It's about to change forever. You need to understand that. Verse 6 says, But if the watchmen see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. See, God isn't going to hold this man accountable like that unless he prepared him for the job, even though he's not e he was not even a religious man. But God used him to save the Western world. Then that was going to be the last political watchman in this age. And uh, again, you can see why Winston Churchill said, I felt as if I were walking with destiny, that all my past life has been but a preparation for this hour and this trial." That is an amazing statement. 
all he saw that he saw it and did not know much about the bible he wasn't a very religious man but he he just sensed that god not well he sensed that the, he was walking with destiny but he would hardly ever mention the word god notice verse 7 how this is is all changing now Verse 7, So you, O son of man, I, now this is a different watchman, I have set you a watchman. Now this is a different uh, watchman because this watchman is not chosen by people or in this world, he's chosen by God. And this is the only message that's going to be delivered in this end time to warn Israel in this world. And it's about God's watchman. And notice what he says, I have set you a watchman unto the house of Israel, therefore you shall hear the word at my mouth, at my mouth, and warn them from me. Right from God's mouth. Again, prophetic Israel is American Britain, and you can see that in our book that I mentioned before. Oh, how God has blessed three nations that I'm talking about here especially, and, uh, and they have not done what God wanted them to do. So uh, we're living in a dangerous world, and we need to realize that, as, he, he's, as God says in verse 11, that I want, you to, I want you to turn and turn and turn and live. He makes us choose. You want to choose life or death? He's making us choose physically, but He's going to save most of us spiritually, no matter what we do. He's going to do that. He's promised to do that. Well, you can go on and see whether well, this watchman of God's doesn't warn the people, then uh, their, their blood's going to be on His head. But if He warns them, then the, their blood is on their own head. God wants us to choose. He's warning us. He always warns us. And there, there are just a multitude of Scriptures in the Bible that tell you what God is doing. And yet people don't even know about those Scriptures. It says in verse 29 here, Then shall they know that I am the Eternal. I'm telling you, they don't know that now. But you see, by this suffering that they will go through, they're going to learn that. They're going to learn and get to know God. They've forsaken God. We have. Our, our nations have forsaken God, and He's calling upon us now to turn this around and repent and live, and live. He always warns us. He is a God of love, but sometimes He has to spank His children. That's just the way it is. No more political watchmen, though, you see, because now God says we're going to have to turn, turn, and turn. But notice verse 33, And when this comes to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. You see what these people didn't really know? They had a watchman. They believed he was a watchman. But they did not know and did not believe that he was a prophet as well, warning them exactly of what God said would happen. That's what this is all about. Now, you have to have a great work to make people know that a prophet was among them, and, uh, and it's there for people to see it, if they'll see if they'll just do something about it. They didn't act when the watchman warned, but God says they're going to see that he, this man was also a prophet when it all comes to pass, and then a great multitude is going to come out of that tribulation in repentance. And God is going to begin to work with them spiritually. I mean, this is just phenomenal and wonderful news. And God wants us to walk with destiny. He wants you to walk with destiny like Winston Churchill never, ever had the opportunity to do. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. Request Gerald Flurry's booklet, Winston S. Churchill, The Watchman, to understand this leader's profound sense of destiny. Also request our booklets on The World Tomorrow and the Biblical Book of Joel. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.